Let's go, let's go, let's go, and welcome to the Fort Lee Regional Chamber of Commerce presents Members at Work, our first episode of 2022. Uh, I'm your host, Fayla. We're here at the One of One Production Studios where we do podcasting, of course, voiceover, music, recording, all that good stuff. And today, our featured member is Jeff Ware, who is also our president of the Fort Lee Regional Chamber. Uh, And he's also the district administrator at New Jersey District 6 Little League. Welcome to the show, Jeff. Thanks, Fela. I've uh, seen all the episodes and can't wait to be uh, (laughs) featured myself. All right. Fantastic. Well, we're just going to, you know, keep it basic. You know, are you from this area? So I'm a lifelong resident of Teaneck and mm-hmm. didn't really know anything about Fort Lee. You know, I mean, I knew it was there. Um, my memories of a kid of coming to a place called the Bagel Nosh, um, which was which was where uh, Boston Market is now, you know, to get oh, bagels. Yeah. That was, you know, 100 years ago. <laughs> um, but didn't really know much about Fort Lee till my brother moved here, um, you know, about 25 years ago and had nephews. And uh, they played Little League, and I came up here to Fort Lee to coach Little League with uh, my brother and on my nephew's teams. And uh, really never looked back since. I mean, Fort Lee's kind of been my second hometown since. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, It's been a year since taking the reins as the president. Um, How has that been so far? Um. It's been more work than I thought, Um, (laughs) but, you know, most of life's challenges are, you know, anything worth doing is a lot of work, but it's also been great, um, you know, for my personal brand and for my organization, the Little Leagues in the area. Um, It's all about getting involved and, uh, you know, it's one more progression in my step of being involved in the chamber uh, from, you know, just member to a committee, to a committee chair, to you know, being on the board and now being president, you know, the more you put in, the more you get out. Exactly. Exactly. With these organizations. Um, How did you, what made you get into the chamber system or, or working with, because you're with a few chambers. Yeah. So yeah. So Fort Lee was the second chamber I joined actually. So um, when I got back into little league and then as a coach with my nephews and then met a old friend of mine who was had the position of district administrator before me at a game and he brought me in as his assistant and then he retired and now I took over as you know the district administrator my first year was 2014 and we were assigned to host a state tournament um Mm -hmm. in Little Ferry and it's a big undertaking to host a state tournament. I mean, it's 300, 300 teams narrowed down to four finalists in the whole state. And it's a big undertaking. And we knew we were going to need money to run this tournament well and, you know, the help of the business community. So because we were hosting it in Little Ferry, I joined the Meadowlands Chamber. And through that, you know, made some great contacts, got some sponsors, were able to put together an ad journal and really put on a tournament that, the rest of the state was really in awe of and nice. that we were proud of in the district. And, but, you know, the Meadowlands is great. It's a great organization. It's got a little bit of different flavor than the Fort Lee Chamber. Mm-hmm. But when I looked at, did I want to continue to be a member of the Meadowlands Chamber and did I want to reach out and be members of other chambers, the region of Fort Lee aligned better with our leagues. You know, we have leagues from Rochelle Park up to Anglewood Cliffs and Fort Lee, Little Ferry, Teaneck, Palisades Park and almost everything in between. The seven towns that make up the Fort Lee Regional Chamber are seven towns that have leagues under my district. Mm -hmm. So it just made perfect sense. The alignment was there. So I joined Fort Lee as well. And as far as getting sponsors goes, it's been a lot better for us because the leagues align and I've been able to find team sponsors and field sponsors for our local leagues from the same towns. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, I mean, I I always see your your stuff, your posts and stuff about the the league when it's uh when it's time and I know how in, important it is. Did you play sports? I so I, yeah, quick. I played baseball like my <laughs> entire did? life. Yeah, uh-huh. I mean, I played baseball. I mean, I'm not going to say I was super <laughs> stellar, you know, 
you know, one of these former athlete stars becomes district administrator. No, I, I mean, I like the administrative side of it as much as the playing side of it. I yes. Mean, um, I actually got into Little League organization at 16. You know, when mm-hmm. I was in high school, a friend of mine and I coached a Little League team in Teaneck. Oh. So uh, we coached from the time we were 16 um, till I was 19 and went away to college. Oh. Um, and then when I came back from college, I went right back to coaching again. And oh. by 25, I was president of the Teaneck Southern Little League, which mm. probably, I mean, I don't haven't heard of anyone in all my years of doing this now. I haven't heard of anyone who's been a younger league president than age 25. Yeah. Most of the people involved in Little League and who get involved in the administrative side, it's after their kids have done playing. Yeah. I was doing it the opposite <laughs> <That's> before. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, don't you see like a correlation too between, you know, playing sports and the leadership as well? I think that also helps later on in life because I played sports as well. I always tell people, get your kids into hey, some you know, kind of so, organized. Well, right. I, w- I was a teacher for 15 years as well. Yeah. And I think one of the things that um, schools might not do a good enough job when I talk to employers is that schools don't teach teamwork. And there's very few jobs that you can get now without being part of a team. Very you know, true. schools are very individual. You know, your grades are your grades, your progress is your progress. So in order to learn those teamwork skills, yeah. sports is a great way to do that. I mean, it is a, even, you know, a, there's individual success in baseball, but you're still part of a team. Team, yeah. You know, so you do learn those teamwork skills on a baseball team. And one of the other things you learn is to be part of a community. Yes. And that's the synergy I see between a chamber of commerce and a little league is that we're both doing something to better the community. Yeah, agree. Agree. Um, so, okay, getting back to the chamber, um, what are the goals for 2022? As we so, I mean, kind of on the same themes I've already been talking about, our biggest goal is engagement, involvement. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a prime example. I want to tell my story of how the chamber has been successful for me. I mean, mm-hmm. and quite frankly, I mean, I'm not selling pizza. <laughs> I'm not selling legal services or life insurance. I'm actually selling you giving me money yeah. <laughs> just for marketing, a, a, a great, sponsorship, yeah, you know, a for great a great orga- cause. Or, yeah, and, but I've been successful at yeah. that because I've gotten involved and because I've told my story and because I think people trust me because I'm there, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm building these relationships. And it's that's the message I want to get out to the chamber members is that you kind of got to be there as much as you can. You know, and everyone obviously has different time schedules and their businesses need their attention as well. And there's different ways of getting involved. And that's what I want to try and share with all the members is what are all the different ways of getting involved? And if we don't have one, how can we help you? What are your ideas for getting involved? Mm -hmm. So like one of the things we're, we're going to restart our committee structure. And so we're going to take the main core functions of the chamber, like publicity, like membership, like events, like community relations. Mm -hmm. And we have committees for those. We're one of our board members that's the chair or co-chair of those committees. But we're going to invite members with expertise or interest in those functions to join those committees. And that was, was successful for me. That's how I really got super involved in the chamber is by joining the community relations committee, Mm -hmm. which runs our basketball tournament each year. And I met people in the athletics department at the high school, you know, businesses that sponsored the basketball tournament who were, you know, they're sponsoring the basketball tournament. It's a logical step to sponsor a little league team, you know? So I just met people. And then as I meet people, when I now walk into a networking event, which 10 years ago made me nervous, now people know you. You walk yeah. into the door, you're on a committee, people know you. You don't yeah. have to do that awkward, who are you, what do you do phase. Yeah. You just start talking to people, introducing other people. So I really want to get that message out about how your involvement pays off and really showcase the different ways that you can get involved in the chamber. Agreed. I'm one of those people as well. So <laughs> <laughs> right. show up and, yeah, it, it's... Yeah, it's not that nervous thing. You're right. I get, I, I get excited to right. network and, you know, meet more people that's in business and growing their thing and how we could help each other. And, yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's a whole community. And now, now when I go to, like, the Chamber events, I have the dual role of being president as well. So I really don't talk about Little League as much as I used to. Yeah. But I'm now making connections and introducing people. And that just 
lets people see me as a trustworthy relationship. Yeah, yeah. So I don't have to really talk about Little League. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually more <laughs> successful now as chamber president and as being involved in the chamber than I was before. Because yeah. people come to me and ask me for connections to other members, and then I get to talk about Little League. Mm-hmm. And I think business people can do the same thing. Exactly. You know, when you put people together and you start making introductions, people see you as a trustworthy figure, and they're likely to refer you or to do business with you when the time comes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agree with everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad. Yes. I'm glad the message is resonating. You know? Oh yes, and yes. The, the more members who can take that message and say, "Yeah, he's telling the truth." Oh yeah. You know? I mean, because I'm as everybody you could tell by my accent, I'm not from Jersey. Uh, <laughs> I'm from South Carolina, and um, I've been in the Jersey area for ten years, and it's only in my last like three that I've really dove into the community and you know because it was all about as an audio engineer going to the city doing Mm -hmm. gigs going in and out but being able to now know people in my community it has made it so much better for me and like a, a mental health and even just Everything about living here, it, mm-hmm. it gets better when you just know people and, and it's, uh, you know, you're helping each other. It so. is a comfortable feeling knowing that anything that comes up, you probably know the know person somebody, to contact yeah. about it, you know? <laughs> That's the best part about, yeah, being a part of all these different networking groups right. now. It's like, oh, I know an insurance guy. I know a real estate. I know right. all of these, a doctor for everything yeah. <laughs> that you need a specialty on. So. I mean, since I've been in the chamber office two days a week for the last month and a half, we get some interesting phone calls. Mm-hmm. But I'm surprised at how much I know and how I can connect them to the right person yeah. just from eight <laughs> years of chamber contacts. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, I- I'm right there with you. And, you know, our stories are congruent congruent because um, I came in the same way, not really knowing what I Wanted to get out of it, but I kind of heard a Gary V. I don't know if you ever heard mm-hmm. it. He's, <laughs> but he was like, go old school, go to a chamber. And I was like, I should do that because I was keeping it very digital right. with, you know, it was just posting and social media. But as a business owner, you still need to have that face to face and people in your community know what you do. Right. Which, yeah, social media is all important. And in fact, our February yeah. newsletter is going to be about helping each other on social media. Yeah. But that face to face, building trust, because you may not need that person immediately. You might not be able to make a sale today to that person. But if you build trust with them, next time somebody they know needs you, they're going to be your first referral. Exactly. Exactly. And that's that's what we've come up to in these last couple, especially through the pandemic. It, it, it was just great to have that those connections um, in the community. Um, so what events do we have coming up through the chamber? Let's get into that. So we're going to be doing um, we did the women's networking, which you attended yes, last week that, with we, Hackensack Chamber. We, we ran out of chairs. So, and that's, so yeah. that's a good problem <laughs> a to have. Fantastic thing. Absolutely. Yes. And we're going to be doing more. Um, regional networking events with our partners in Hackensack, with our partners in Cliffside Park, with mm-hmm. our partners in in Paramus, just so we can see new faces. I mean, maybe our business here isn't global yet, but it's certainly regional. Mm-hmm. So we definitely want to get you some connections beyond the Fort Lee seven towns in our regional chamber. Um, so we're also planning a young professionals event. Yes, I'm a part of the young, the so YP We're going to do committee. speed networking because yes. we think that's an up-and-coming group. Yeah. Um, we've got our women's and morning networking, which are free events. I mean, there's no reason not to attend those events mm-hmm. once a month in the mornings. One's strictly for women professionals. The other one is open to everybody. We're going to start those again um, in February. Um, we've got... Our golf outing, of course, coming up in June. That was a real great yeah. event last year. Um, we're looking at some new locations. Anyone who has feedback or suggestions on last year's location and what we can do to improve, always looking for suggestions and ideas on how to improve. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have our gala coming up in in, in the fall. Um, we want to do some more fun events. We're, we, we're going to bring back our roundtable networking, which interestingly we did the week before the world 
changed <laughs> back in uh, March of 2020. Kalini, yeah. We had our roundtable networking, and I still get people coming up to me and telling me what a wonderful event it was. So I'm going to leave it a little bit mysterious. If you don't know what roundtable networking is, you'll have to come and find out. But, I mean, we had people super engaged, and the feedback two years later is still, hey, that was a wonderful, great event, especially for people who are uncomfortable networking. We kind of forced you yeah. into networking. Yes, Yes, that is a skill everybody needs. Right, and, and we're, we're planning, uh, yeah. we're bringing back our speaker breakfasts. We used yeah. to do quarterly. We would bring in somebody to teach you a valuable skill, um, not a sales pitch, but somebody to like actually teach you something for your personal growth and for your business growth. So the first one we're going to do is on a how to networking, and we're going to bring in somebody who has a non-traditional view of networking and how networking should work. And so stuff you're not going to find just by Googling how to network. Yeah. Though there are some good suggestions out there for that too. I mean, one of the things I Googled um, was said, you know, come early and help set up the chairs. You know, when people come, when they, people arrive and they see you setting stuff up, they'll think you know what's going on and they'll ask you questions. So yeah. it gets people to talk to you. <laughs> you know, little gimmicks uh -huh. like that. So that, that worked for uh -huh. me. I used to do that the first year I was in the chamber. Yeah. But we're going to have somebody come in and do a how to network presentation for our first speaker breakfast sometime in March. So look oh. for that as well. All right. Looking forward to that. Um, oh, and we're going to be having open houses here starting in March again. Um, we kind of cooled out because of pandemic stuff. Um, but yeah, March and I'll be, I'll get into exact date. Yeah. As we get, we do more of these, which we'll have more coming out in the next few weeks as well. Um, yeah. And we're going to encourage other members to do that right now. I'm looking for someone to host our February morning networking. So we're going to encourage members to host events. If you've got an idea yeah. for an event, reach out to us. If you've got a space, and it doesn't have to be an event space. Like we've had morning networkings. You know, you've been to morning networkings at M&T Bank. Yep. You know, in their <laughs> conference room. We've been at KEB Hannon Bank. Uh -huh. We've been up to Cross Rivers headquarters several times for networking events. Mm -hmm. So if you even have office space, you want to do a networking event in the morning before your office opens at nine, we can come in there, you know, Eight o'clock, do an hour worth of networking, even stay as your customers come in. They can see some vibrancy, some energy going on in your space. So, yeah, let us know if you'd like to host an event at your space. All right. Fantastic. Well, we made it, Jeff. Oh, wow. <laughs> Was there anything Time else? Time flies when you're having fun. It's exactly. Yeah. I told you. Just be a conversation yeah. about, yeah. you know, about what we, we both do and what we already know about. Um, and sharing it to our members. And we want more members to do this. We want to know what you do. Everyone's why, got a story yes. to tell. Yes. And let's get it on camera because we're going to share it social media wise. Um, this is going to be on the, the podcast platform that we have, the, the Members at Work um, platform, which is on um, like iHeartRadio, Apple, all, all the major um, all the major platforms for podcasting. Um, I usually I, find it just by Googling Fort Lee Members at Work. Exactly. It's a, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's on Google Podcasts. It's, like, like, it's everywhere. So. Find us, and if you're a member, anything, uh, if you're a member, want to be a member, uh, please reach out at Fort Lee, was it Fort Lee Fort Chamber. Lee Chamber. Com. Yeah. So, yeah, we're this is a great community. Um, we have so many different, you know, businesses, hey, including a podcast business to everything, you know. So, um, I, I, we really enjoy being a part of it. And um, since I joined a few years back, it's, it's been nothing but love. And uh, thank you guys for, you know, having a place to. Hey, well, thank you for your membership. Thank all of you for your memberships. And if you want to join, let us know. Members, if you have some ideas, certainly let us know. Most of you have my cell phone number. You can find it on the website. Um, find my email. Give me a ring. Uh, shoot me a message. We want to hear from you. All right. Okay. So that's it uh, from Jeff and myself. Uh Let's go <laughs> with the Fort Lee Regional Chamber of Commerce Members at Work podcast. Talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>